So, Gary, so you are, it's your stage. I, I can share the screen. Do I have permission to share screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, share. share. You all should see my notes here. And I've already logged them into our group, just in case we have a technology failure or something. At least you can kind of follow along with what we've got going on here. So let's look at the worldwide podcasting numbers. I was really quite shocked to discover that in December 2020, there was 1,700,000 podcasts that were put out into the world in December, just that one month. That's a lot of podcasts. There's 43 million podcasts that are published every year. Now, they think that close to 60 million podcasts are actually created. It's just a lot of people decide not to do it or they crush a podcast that they put together. Every month, there's 100,000 podcasts that are started. Some podcasts are only designed to last two or three weeks. If you know anything about like rugby, they have the Six Nations rugby finals. Those really only last about six weeks long. And when you think about it, there's thousands of podcasts that start and follow a team or follow the whole thing or follow whatever it is, and they will die as soon as either the team is out or the Six Nations is over, and that podcast won't exist anymore. So you have these really situational short-term podcasts that are designed to get a lot of people's numbers very quickly. Really, after about 90 days of a podcast launch, only about 30,000 worldwide actually exist further. A lot of people think that there's a lot of money that's going to come in from sponsors and nobody even knows that they're there or they get their first report from their upload site. We'll talk about that later, but you have to upload through a podcast distributor and they can tell you how many people have downloaded from them. My first week, my download was three. And if you can imagine somebody who's expecting, you know, millions of followers or, or, or listeners or downloads, you know, and they got three, they say, well, that, screw that. I'm not going to do this again. You know, so that's where they kind of sit back. But of the 100,000 that begin any given month, at the end of the first year, only about 10,000 of them still exist. And you also have to look at that of that 1,750,000 that were in December, if you could follow them all, you'd find about 300,000 of them would rebrand themselves sometimes during the year. So let's just say I have a podcast that's, uh, that I call Two Drunk Blokes, and we're basically sitting in the pub drinking, and we're talking about the events of the week. And then after maybe 50 episodes, we decide, why don't we change, change this, you know, to two drunk boatmen? We're going to just go out in the boat and drink in the boat and talk about events in the boat. And so they change. So they rebrand themselves. And you'll find that this happens all the time. Sometimes you'll belong to a podcast and you'll see it just vanished. And you're there like, well, what happened to it? But then if you change the name a little bit or you look for the person who did it, you'll find that it's the same podcast now under a new name. So... You just, just have to keep that in mind, that rebranding literally means that you've created a new podcast. Most podcasts are less than once a week. One time a week, twice a month, once a month. I even was able to find that there was a podcast that came out quarterly. It comes out four times a year. And it has a lot to do with yachts. It's a, it's a yacht sales organization who has a resale all across the planet in various marinas. And every quarter they put out a podcast where they talk about the best deals on the planet if you want to buy a yacht. Now, I was looking for it, but I, I couldn't find it. But I understand it's out there and I understand... When it does play, it has a lot of downloads, a lot of downloads. So if you're thinking about markets and niches, that's a really small niche. And you're talking about people who have expendable income in the millions, maybe tens of millions for some of these boats. And they get a lot of downloads. They get a lot of downloads. That means people are, are there. They're ready to go. They're hot to strike. 
Okay, so who's listening? On average, your youth between the ages of 12 and 24 listen to 40% of all the podcasts that are listened to during the week. So a lot of this is music. It, it could be kids playing garage music, you know, garage band music. It could be people talking about how they hate their teachers or their homework or, you know, maybe we should all join this club together or whatever else. But it's it's kids doing a lot of stuff. But you have people in the 24, so you got got college students, You've got people who are in the military who are working. A lot of them are listening to politics or listening to their other news, you know, the, the, not the corporate media that's telling you what the government wants you to hear, but they're picking up what the real world is all talking about. When you get to people 25 to 54, you're talking about 39% of the population who is listening into the podcast. And if you consider that, that you know, you're almost at 80% of the population in the target market that everybody wants to sell to. I mean, you really kind of have a hit uh, market already made for you by just creating a podcast. The average podcast listener this year listened to eight podcasts during the week. The average household income, now that doesn't mean what they made, but what the household they live in is over 100,000 pounds. It, US dollars, that's like a hundred and and uh, twenty eight thousand uh, dollars right now so they're looking at in us dollars that by 2022 it will be the hundred thousand to hundred fifty thousand mark for podcast for 38 percent of all households somebody is listening to a podcast in that household so you get the idea that there's expendable income there. 60% of all podcast listeners actually hold university degrees and multiple degrees at that. 80% are full-time employees. The day that most podcasts are uploaded is Wednesday, and that is also the biggest download day on the planet. The best length of a podcast is 30 to 40 minutes. That's mostly because of people's concentration, and it's also what I call drive time. People can listen to that usually on a commute one way or the other. Now, when you look at people who are listening, it's always more men than women who seem to be listening to podcasts. But that's changing. Women are catching up to men and men are don't really have much room to grow. So right now it's 43% of men last year or, or in 2019 were listening to it. But by the time we get to 2023, it's going to be 49% of the men. Women will virtually almost double the number of women who are actually, well, not, not double, they'll get in another 50% over the next three years of people who are listening to podcasts in, in the sex of women. So you're really going to be reaching out. And if you have a podcast they're listening to, you're going to have that segment of the market that has a lot of money and is ready to spend usually. So what can be podcasts? I, I will tell you the first podcast I ever listened to was here in the UK and it was generated in Oregon. Oregon had just passed the law that said uh, personal use of marijuana or the sale of marijuana from approved dispensaries was allowed. And this was a niche that these people are coming up about how you could buy your marijuana, how you could have it shipped to you if you didn't actually live in the state of Oregon. I mean, they, they had all the ins and outs of how you could do that. I'm living in London, and it was actually a friend who just said, have you ever heard this podcast? This is really interesting. And so that was my introduction to a podcast. First time I ever heard one. It was about 2008. So it's legal to have marijuana in Oregon. It's legal to buy marijuana in Oregon. It's legal to grow marijuana for your own use in Oregon. And that's all they were talking about. So it was legal to talk about that there, but they could broadcast it anywhere. So anybody could download it. Now it may not be legal for you to do that where you live, but that's not what the, the rules are all about. It's, it's got to be legal where you generate the podcast. So you can talk about anything. There's podcasts on cooking. There's podcasts on fishing. There's podcasts on how to fly, tie a fly uh, fish uh, lure. There's political, political commentary is a huge thing. There's radio theater type things where you have actors or actresses just reading parts that have been mixed together with sound effects, et cetera, just like they did back in the uh, 30s radio. 
And that's that's a growing thing. Civic affairs. There are some city councils that actually do their city council meetings and generate a podcast and send that out to every all the citizens in an email shot as a way to say we're keeping you all informed about what's going on. Total sunshine. We're not doing anything behind your backs. So there's an awful lot of things that are going on there. There are podcasts that deal with medical conditions, with medical experts who are talking about that, constantly telling you, please go see your own physician, please see. But, you know, we're giving you some knowledge that's information that you can go and talk about. But again, it's anything you can think of as long as it's awful where you are. Where do people listen? Oh, they go on when you're driving to work, when you're riding the train, when you're uh, on a bus, in the gym, running on the uh, treadmill, cleaning your house, taking the garbage out, whatever your your task is. If you could put headphones on, you can have a, a podcast going. And that is really the truth. You can listen to them anytime you want, anytime you're free. People take walks at lunchtime listening to podcasts. How much time spent? In 2016, it, the average was four hours a week people would listen to podcasts. It's estimated that this year, people who are listening to podcasts will listen to about 10 hours or more of podcasts. So again, if you're only having on average one or less per month of an episode being put out, you're ending up with a good chance that somebody's going to land upon your podcast and say, well, I'll start listening to it because they're, they're going to expand their time that they're actually listening to podcasts. Best days to publish again, it's Wednesday. And we have something in podcasting called reach. Reach is not downloads itself. And the number of downloads you have, and then somebody who likes it and sends that out to somebody and says, you might want to hear this, or I really like this. What do you think? That's called reach when they send your podcast out. So uh, the best day to publish is on Wednesday because you have 25% reach. So it's not really the, for example, I had 3000 podcast downloads last month, but my reach was 2.5%. So I actually had close to 5,000, almost 6,000 downloads that came off of that. So that is the value of reach. Friday is the second most reached day with 24% of the downloads hitting reach. And Thursday is 22%. And the rest of the week is below 20%. And some of the much lower. Sunday's not a good day at all to unload, unless you're doing religious if you're doing a religious podcast, I guess a lot of people listen to it on that day, but there you go. Now here's advertiser money, because this is why people get into podcasting for the most part. They, everybody knows that you can get advertiser revenue and it's not very much when you consider it because basically the average right now is if you have a podcast and you have a hundred thousand listeners an advertiser will pay you 20 US dollars to put an ad in your podcast. That's and on the front of your podcast or on the end of your podcast. So if you can get two advertisers, one do it on the front, one do it on the end, you're now getting 40. If you are able to have a break in your podcast where they can come in and do like a one minute advert or spiel or whatever, that has about a $40 payment per thousand. doesn't sound like a lot, but if you have 10,000 subscribers and you've got a hundred thousand downloads going on every week, just do the math. It's a lot of money that can be coming your way for doing something that you kind of enjoy. Now, podcasting, it's equipment. I, when I first started looking at this, I was seeing these photographs of you know, the podcast studio, YouTube videos about what you should have and what your podcast studio should look like. Gary Jenkins is operating from half of a table in the living room of his small little London apartment. I have no soundproofing. I've got a major road outside my front window. I have done things to try to reduce the noise. But most of the people are not going to see me or anything because a podcast does not have a picture. Now I do screencasting as well. I figure as long as I'm doing it, do it all right. But 
The microphone is your most important object. The microphone on your computer is never going to be as good as having a, a good microphone to pick up your voice. And so the very best entry microphone that's out there is called a Samsung Q2U. It's used by podcasters all around the, the planet. I had one, but my voice sounded really tinny. It sounded, it didn't sound, didn't have the resonance. It didn't have what I needed for my voice. And that's the thing about microphones. You'll find that people will find that a different microphone will work better for them. One of the problems with the Samsung for me is I, the way I speak, I have what they call plosives. So like when I go or, you know, that really is difficult to cover up and it's really uncomfortable for people to listen to for very long. So what I have is I went up to a Rode Podcaster Pro Inside, it has internal mechanisms in this to counteract my plosives in my speaking. But I also have a, I'm going to just hold this up. I'm sorry, it's a noise. But I also have a sock around it, a wind sock. That is also to help cover up for my plosives so that you are not going to be hearing them and causing discomfort. Remember, podcasting is usually listened to through headphones or through earbuds. So you want to make it the very best experience for the end user. And so you really need to consider a great microphone. Now I could afford this microphone. It, it's really not compared to the Samsung. It's about twice as much. The Samsung's about 58 us dollars. This one was selling for about a hundred us dollars. So it been cheaper if I was in Australia because it's made in Australia. <laughs> so yeah, the road. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Oh, I got Trisha's attention on that one. Oh, oh, okay. But the next thing that's really important is you have to have a mixer. You have to be able to put what your microphone is going to take into a mixer before it actually gets into your computer. And the reason for putting it into your mixer is so that you can start to calibrate for noises and so that when you're recording, you also have another person's voice coming in from whatever system and you can amplify or make them about equal to you because what you don't want to have is you sounding really good and them, and so this is just how we're going to do things today you're not going to listen to that podcast. So you need a mixer to deal with, with that mixing. So I use a Yamaha MG 10 XU. It's a good mixer. It's used by a lot of musicians. I can use, I can run two microphones into this. I can actually run a, like electric guitar into it. If I could play one and add one. It also has some bells and whistles. For example, I can put like an echo to my voice on this thing, or I could make it sound like I'm coming out of the depths of hell. And, you know, it's just really awful. I've never had to use it for, for that purpose, but it's there. It's there. And when I'm doing like the relaxation videos that I'm hoping to develop, I'm thinking maybe if I can have a slight echo effect on my voice at some point, in the, in the journey that they're taking in their mind into the relaxation, it may help enhance that experience for them. Let them get the effect that they're actually going deeper down, you know, that, that kind of sensation, because that's really what we're just playing with is their mind there. So I, that's what I use and I can recommend it. I, I would say it's a good mixer. It, uh, cost me roughly about 299 us dollars uh, to get that mixer in and it's really good one of the things i like about it it has something called compression it has a compressor on it compression is something that radio disc jockeys use a lot of 
that is how they can sound like they're speaking really loud when they're not because their voice is being compressed into a much narrower range and your ear picks that up and so they sound like really excited and going on with that compression and that is something that not all mixers do as far as your vocals so you have to be really kind of keeping that in mind now there's a there is a product that i wanted to buy mainly because of the the price it was close to about 130 us dollars called the zoom pod track 4 it's really been highly rated by people all around the world it's a product that's made in japan it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of my yamaha but it's very portable my yamaha i would have to kind of like pack in a suitcase and be kind of hard to take around but this zoom pod track is quite small and it's also battery powered <clears throat> so if you're going to buy it make sure you buy the electric cable that is an option for it uh, so you're not wearing out your batteries like crazy but it will but if for like if nicole is going to go off and visit the people there and wants to talk to them out in the middle of the trees or whatever this would be perfect because you could be operating off a battery. It will run for about four to five hours. You can do your 30 minute interview or whatever for your podcast. You can both walk away and then you just do your, your sound work later at the end on your computer. But that's, that's a, that's an excellent choice. I can't get it in Europe. I could get it in the United States, but I couldn't get it for the electrical system here. So I just decided to go with the Yamaha. For myself now i create all of my podcasts on zoom the uh, what we're doing right now this this zoom here and so what we would call this is a screencast because i have a screen they can see me they have a screen i can see them and we're talking and that's really good for putting on to youtube but when i get done with my zoom call what I do is I end up getting a file for the audio and I get a file for the video, which incorporates the audio in it. So you have an MP3 and then you get an MP4 that comes with it. When I have my MP4, what I do is I take it into my software package called script. And there I can edit the words, I can edit the media. So, I mean, sometimes these AI systems don't get things right, especially when you have str strange, not Anglo-Saxon names or whatever else. People who have accented English, the AI doesn't quite get it right. It gets about 95% of the right. I'd have to say that it's pretty good. The other nice thing about like the script software is it will identify all the ums, ahs, ers, et cetera, those space holders that people who are uncomfortable <laughs> will make. And with just a flick of a button, I can remake, I can remove them all from the media and from the, this transcript. And I think the most I've had is 275 in a 30 minute video from somebody who just really had a hard time putting their thoughts together even though i'd already given them the questions i was going to ask them <laughs> it's just they just really had a difficult time but it, it saves you a lot of time doing that because you as a listener don't mind hearing you know it, it's kind of like this but if you heard you know you know what I mean? You know, it, it, it's kind of, uh, you don't want to hear that. And I have to get all of that out, but I also have to make it look so it's kind of natural because you really don't like watching a video that's constantly going jump, jump. You know, you want it to look kind of like a smooth conversational because what do you start doing in the back of your mind? You start wondering, well, what did they cut out? What don't they want you to know that they just talked about? You know, that kind of a thing. So that's that's the purpose of it. Now, all podcasts, once you get all the work done, 
you know, you can load it up to, once you get, get all this work done, you can load it right up to YouTube if you want, but you're going to, you're going to take it and say, okay, now give me a transcript and that you can put onto your MP4. Give me a video portion and now give me the audio portion. The audio portion, you have to upload to a podcast platform. There are hundreds of upload platforms on the planet and every one of them has their own rules. And some of them will say that they will take, they'll do like two podcasts a month for free. So you can get in and you can send off your podcast for free. Great. But because they're doing it for free, they own your podcast. Not only that, but many of them after 30 to 90 days, they just eliminate them unless they think they have something that's really archival and something they can sell it because they now own that podcast. So even though you did the work and let's just say you are doing a podcast and let's say that you somehow lands parliamentary minister or, you know, the vice president of some corporation or something. And in that podcast, the guy says something that is really newsworthy. It's your podcast. You should be able to profit from it. But if you're doing it for three free through these upload sites, they own it. And you know, damn well, they're going to take it and exploit it for their own wealth and prominence. And you will get no credit because they own the podcast. So don't go for free. <laughs> That's my big thing. Don't go for free. I, I go with a company called Buzzsprout partially because I still hold ownership of my podcast. I think I pay them something like 24 pounds a month. I don't, I'm not sure how to translate that for everybody. Maybe $30 a month in US currency, but I can upload 12 hours of podcasts each month through that cycle. What I go for is 30 minute podcast max has to be at least 20 minutes to count as a podcast in my opinion. So I always fall somewhere between about 23 to 28 minutes, usually in that realm. So if you think about it, I can do 24 podcasts each month. I publish three times a week. So I'm really only talking somewhere around 12. So I actually have 12 more podcasts that I can do. And every once in a while, I get a chance to do like a bonus podcast for people. I've had the situation one time where one person contacted me and said, you know, I rethought about doing a podcast with you because they've already turned me down. And then they come back and they say, I would, I'm willing to do a podcast, but if we can do that like now or tomorrow morning or something. And so I will throw that in as a bonus. So when you upload a podcast, where does it go? It goes usually to four platforms. It will go to iTunes, which is also known as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music. Those are the big four where you will go. If you have an Apple product and you want to get a podcast, you just go to the Apple App Store and you can download from there. Once you've downloaded a podcast, all you're getting is that episode that you've downloaded. If you want more, you need to subscribe and then they will automatically appear in your feed as they are received. So I release on Tuesday, my first podcast, but it's not everywhere in the world until Friday because it's going through a chain. These people get it. And then what I have done is I have gone to 14 other applications and I have given them my feed criteria that I use with Buzzsprout. And I have also have a tracker on it now because I have a company called Chartable that will track my podcast worldwide. And while I'm talking about Chartable, I need to make this a little bit, I want to get there. If I can bring up, I've gotten some reviews that have come in. So Chartable tells me when I get reviews across the planet, which is really important. It'd be great, but let's just take a quick look on the overview. Okay. This is Chartable saying for the last seven days, what podcasts are and how many downloads are getting. That's just information. And someday I kind of hope that it's up in the thousands, but right now it's less than 20. 
but it's showing that over a seven day period, people are listening to the podcast. Now that's a nice idea about what's happening, but the truth is there are people who are going to be listening to my podcast for the very first time this week, who are going to go back and listen to every podcast I had. And so that's what happens. You, you have normal weeks where you're sitting around and you're talking about, well, I had 12 people who came through trackable. I had nobody on this day. I had some people come, but look what happened on March 5th. I had 74 people download my podcasts that day. I have no reason to understand why. And I don't know which ones they actually brought down. It's just that that 74 were downloaded on that day all around the world. I have no idea where it's at. And so I posted something about my audience. Let's we'll go to world. Everything in green is where my podcast is being heard on the planet. So I'm down here in New Zealand. I'm in Korea. I'm in Russia, Ukraine, Hungary, Switzerland, France, Spain. I mean, I'm all over United States, Canada. Not bad. I just got to do something about these Southern hemispheres. Podcasting is not very well known in Africa. They don't really do much of it. It's big in India, but podcasts in English aren't big in India. But that's just part of it. Mexico, podcasts are not big. South America, not big, but you know, it, it's growing. And to be honest, what turns a country green, it's just one person in that country downloaded it on their phone. So I never really know what I really have or what's going on. Now there's something that they call charts. When I first went to these people, I only had one chart that popped up. It was Japan. I was the 103rd most downloaded podcast that week and why I have no idea. But if you can look at it, it's like I, I, I've been in Germany and that's due to Claudia. People, people listen to the Claudia in Germany. So last week I went on the chart this week out. I didn't get enough downloads in the country, but Russia I'm out, but Japan, I'm back in the charts again at 162. So people in Japan have started listening to stuff. And just so that you get an idea, this is Canada. I'm 6,081 in Canada for downloads in in the country you global reach i'm 8291 that means of people who downloaded people shared it and so that's my ranking in the entire globe as far as podcast goes last week not bad for something that started six weeks ago so what i want to say is you all have a voice you all have something of value to share we all talk about how everybody has a book in them, but I think you all have a story and I think you all have the ability, if you want to do this, to have a global reach that people who will never meet you will benefit from your experience, from your strength, from your hope, from your insight. And in many ways, you become a savior because there are people who are failing today who will find that nugget of gold that we're always talking about. And that is the one thing that changes the whole game for them. And so if you ask me, should I podcast? I would say yes. <laughs> Everybody should podcast. And I'm going to stop sharing at this point.